So here in supine position, simplest way to assess is heels of the hand of the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine. We tried this without the bolster, and what I noticed was that her ilium on my side was a little bit more depressed and anteriorly rotated. With the bolster, some of that's been rectified. My thesis is that perhaps psoas is involved. With that depth of pressure, um, and yet that upslip still exists. So I'm going to try a technique that I, I got from a teacher, Natalie Rao. Uh, and I really appreciate it because it's elegant and simple. And it allows the body to do most of the work. I'm bending the leg at 90 degrees and bringing it across the body. My fingertips are just going to slip into that space of the SI joint. So I've got my the softness of my fingertips against the sacrum. And I'm using my hand to just kind of flare the pelvis. My top hand here is directing a little bit of translational force down towards the table. And I'm using my right hand, that one uh, just on the sacrum and the PSIS, to kind of distract. So there's going to be a little bit of muscle energy in this, but we're going to get to that. The goal here is in gliding the ilium laterally. This is towards me. I'm using that distraction, but I'm also going to encourage her body to naturally do that by sliding her foot superiorly. This is just gonna create a little bit of external rotation in the hip joint. Once I've reached that end range, I'm gonna ask her to press the back of the outside of her knee just gently into my hand for about six seconds. And then relax. Feel that motion just kind of resettle itself. And I'm going to reposition the leg, give it a little bit more external rotation, a little bit more distraction, a little bit more compression. And then once I find that end range, again, just about 10% of your strength on the exhale, press against my Awesome. And for about six seconds and then relax. And as I do that, I'm watching her muscle energy pull the sacrum and the ilium apart. The ilium is actually just pulling itself around and it's her muscular force which is helping to correct the body. And so this is beautiful because it really is just, I'm here almost in a uh, guidance role. It's allowing myself to wake up her body's natural instinct to heal. So last time, and just find that inhale, and then on the exhale, a little bit of effort, less effort. As we release that, it can be nice to bring her leg into a bit of a figure four and vice versa. Just holding the joints helps her nervous system feel secure and ensuring that she doesn't try to muscle guard or reset what we just did in there. It can be nice to distract out of the joint and then reassess. A nice result. This is one of those poses that we don't necessarily need to do on both sides. We're trying to correct what is an upslip. 
which can be, uh, in this case, like a posterior rotation, uh, as well as that upslip. So, you know, it tends to be that that's just going to exist on one side. Some of the things that we can do to check in is just check pes anserine and the three muscles associated with it off the TFL, sartorius, and gracilis, just to make sure that there's no uh, associated muscular tension. Vastus lateralis off the quad, uh, quads is also a nice one to bow here on the lateral aspect of the, the femur, just to give yourself like a little bit of um, assurance that that correction is going to, to stay. Again, this is if the muscles are involved, but they're good ones to look at. 